This is the mobility module with emphasis on range of motion. My name is Nicole Rennie. I'm a physical therapist and geriatric certified specialist in physical therapy. I have over 20 years of experience in geriatric physical therapy and I'll be helping you with this module today. I'm Jean Howell and will be the co-facilitator for this module. I have more than 35 years experience as an RN working in assisted living, home care and clinics. By the end of the module today, you're going to learn the following information. The different types of range of motion that you can complete with the various clients. Just the basics about range of motion, the do's and don'ts. The importance of caregiver body mechanics. And also when to notify the nurse when issues arise. There are three different types of range of motion. The most common type that is performed is passive range of motion. This is usually completed when a person is paralyzed or has no strength on an extremity or limb and they cannot assist with the type of range of motion. It's also great for people who need a really long stretch. With passive range of motion, the caregiver is providing all the assistance and the client does not help at all. The second type of range of motion is active assistive range of motion. Active assistive range of motion is when the client and the caregiver are performing the range of motion together. This is really great when a client can start the motion but can't get to the far ex extremes of the motion. And the final type of range of motion is active range of motion. The caregiver won't be helping with this type of range of motion at all. We're just encouraging the client to move independently through big movements. Caregivers, it's important that you take care of yourselves with range of motion. Even if you're young, repetitive bad movements can cause you trouble in the future. Some of the basics that you need to minimize the amount of bending that you're doing at your trunk, and you need to keep your back as straight as possible. This can be accomplished in various ways, but the easiest is just the height of the bed so your back doesn't have to bend. And also know that you can place your knee on the bed to keep your, knee, your back straight. You need to find what works for you. Not everybody has the same type of body and can't get comfortable in the same way. So it's important that you practice and see how to keep the stress off your back. When performing range of motion, it's important that you let the client know what you're going to do prior to doing it. For example, you could say, I'm going to move your arm up over your head. You need to let me know if it hurts and I'm going to do all the work for you. This allows the client to know what you're doing, the most you're going to perform, and if they shouldn't have any pain. The more the client knows, the easier the range of motion will be. I always recommend that range of motion is completed when the client is lying down. This allows the client to be more comfortable and it also allows the caregiver to be in the best position for their own back. One of the common mistakes with range of motion is that we move the limb too quickly. Range of motion be should be completed in a slow movement in both directions. Actually, the slower the better. Range of motion should never hurt. It should feel like a gentle pull. If it does hurt the client, you need to stop and back off the pressure a little bit until the pain is relieved. When performing range of motion, you should go from point A to point B in a straight line. Please remember to move the limbs slowly and avoid rapid or abrupt motions. Caregivers, I always recommend that you read the directions of the range of motion with each visit. Even if you perform the same program many times with an individual, it's important to just double check to make sure there are no changes. Judging how far to move the limb through the movement can be scary. Here are a few tips. When you move the limb, you move it slowly. You'll come to a point where you feel a little bit of resistance. We actually do not push through the resistance. When you feel the resistance, you stop there and you hold that position. Often this is a position that you can't go any further and this is where you begin timing the stretch. Sometimes the client may begin to relax and you can continue to move the limb through the range of motion. But please remember that range of motion should never hurt. It should always feel like a gentle stretch. You should follow the care plan with how long the stretch should be, but the most beneficial time of a stretch is actually 60 seconds. For ease of range of motion, the stretches should be completed on one side and then completed on the other. Over the next several slides, we're gonna be demonstrating some passive range of motion. Remember, passive range of motion is when the caregiver is doing all the work and the client is not assisting. It's important to note the good body mechanics of the caregiver and the position of the client. 
The first stretch is shoulder flexion. The client is lying on their back, their arm is at their side, and their thumb is pointing towards the ceiling. The thumb pointing towards the ceiling is the most important aspect of the stretch. It'll stop any pinching of the shoulder joint when the arm is moved over the client's head. It is best if the caregiver has their hands on the elbow of the client and then on the client's hand or wrist. Before we watch the video, let's review the process for shoulder flexion. First, you've adjusted the height of the bed if necessary or possible. Two, the client was lying on the back, arm at side, and thumb toward the ceiling. Three, the caregiver hand positions, one hand on elbow with the other hand on the wrist or palm. Four, the caregiver kept a back as straight as possible. Five, caregiver placed his knee on the bed if needed to keep his back straight. Number six, informed the client of what they were going to do prior to moving them. Seven, the client's motion was completed through a pain-free range. 8. Move the limb in a straight line from starting to end position. Number 9. Move the limb slowly and avoided rapid or abrupt motions. 10. The held the stretch for the designated time in the care plan. And last, documented the care. So Jenny, we're going to do some range. So you need to tell me if it hurts, okay? Okay. Bring your arm up slow. If it hurts, let me know. Okay, it's hurting. Okay. Just gonna hold it right there. Any better? Yeah, no, it's good. Okay. The next range of motion is shoulder abduction. Note that the client is lying on their back, their arm is at their side, and their palm is facing up towards the ceiling. The palm position is very important because it's going to stop the pinching in the shoulder joint. This stretch is great for dressing. It helps keep the shoulder limber so you get their clothes on and off. Caregivers, once again, it's important that you have your hand on the client's elbow and then either on their hand or wrist. Please remember to move slowly through the range of motion. Again, before we watch the video, let's review the shoulder abduction procedure. Number one, adjusted the height of the bed if necessary and possible. Two, client was lying on his back, arm at side, palm turned upward toward the ceiling. Number three, the caregiver hand positions. One hand stabilize the elbow with the other hand on the wrist or palm. Number four, the caregiver kept his back as straight as possible. Number five, caregiver placed knee on the bed if needed to keep his back straight. Number six, inform the client of what they were going to do prior to moving them. Number seven, the client's motion was completed through a pain-free range. Number eight, Move the limb in a straight line from starting to end position. Number nine, move the limb slowly and avoided rapid or abrupt motions. Number 10, held the stretch for the designated time in the care plan. And number 11, documented the care. So Jenny, we're gonna bring your arm out to the side. You need to let me know if this hurts. I'm going to keep your elbow straight. Any pain? No. Okay. I'm going to back off a little bit. The next stretch is elbow flexion and extension. This is important to assist with feeding and also helps with getting people dressed. 
Once again, the client is lying on their back, their arm is at their side, and their palm is turned up towards the ceiling. The palm position is very important. Again, it minimizes the amount of pinch that could occur in the elbow joint. Caregivers, one hand needs to go onto the elbow to stabilize it to stop it from moving, and the second hand goes on the client's palm or wrist. Let's review the step-by-step -step procedure for elbow flexion and extension. One, you've adjusted the height of the bed if necessary and possible. Two, client was lying on his back, arm at side, palm turned upward toward the ceiling. Three, the caregiver hand positions. One hand stabilize the elbow with the other hand on the wrist or palm. Four, caregiver kept his back as straight as possible. Five, caregiver placed knee on the bed if needed to keep the back straight. Six, inform the client of what they were going to do prior to moving them. Seven, client's motion was completed through a pain-free range. Number eight, move the limb in a straight line from starting to end position. Nine, move the limb slowly and avoided rapid or abrupt motions. Ten, held the stretch for the designated time in the care plan. And last, number 11, document your care. Okay, Jenny, we're going to bend your elbow. Let me do all the work. And if it hurts, let me know. Wow, is that tight. Any pain? The next stretch is wrist flexion. Once again, the client is lying on their back, their arm is out from the shoulder, and their elbow is bent. Caregivers, one hand should be in the client's hand, and the other hand should be stabilizing their wrist. This passive range of motion stretch can help with feeding, and can also help reduce pain in the wrist joints. Now let's look at the wrist flexion procedure. First, adjusted the height of the bed if necessary or possible. Two, client was lying on his back, arm was out from the shoulder, and elbow was bent. Three, the caregiver hand positions. One hand on client's hand and the other hand stabilized the wrist. Four, caregiver kept his back as straight as possible. Five, caregiver placed his knee on the bed if needed to keep the back straight. Six, inform the client of what they were going to do prior to moving them. Seven, client's motion was completed through a pain-free range. Number eight, move the limb in a straight line from starting to end position. Nine, move the limb slowly and avoided rapid or abrupt motions. Ten, held the stretch for the designated time in the care plan. And number eleven, documented the care. We're going to work on your wrist. I'm going to bend your elbow. Just tell me if it hurts at all. Any pain? We're now going to move on to the legs. Please remember to adjust the height of the bed to keep your back straight and to minimize the amount of bending that you need to do. Also note that it is okay to put your knee up on the bed to keep your back straight if that's the most easiest, most comfortable position for you. The client is lying on their back with their knees bent. You will need to assist with this and their arms are sitting in a comfortable position. The caregiver places their hands on either sides of the client's knees. This stretch helps with back pain, walking, and transfers. The following is the hip rotation procedure. 
Number one, adjusted the height of the bed if necessary or possible. Number two, client was lying on his back with his knees bent. Arms were in a comfortable position. Number three, the caregiver hand positions, either side of the client's knees. Number four, the caregiver kept his back as straight as possible. Number five, the caregiver placed knee on the bed if needed to keep his back straight. Number six, informed the client of what they were going to do prior to moving them. Number seven, the client's motion was completed through a pain-free range. Number eight, move the limb in a straight line from starting to end position. Number nine, moved the limb slowly and avoided rapid or abrupt motions. Number 10, held the stretch for the designated time in the care plan. And number 11, documented the care. So Jenny, we're gonna do some range on your legs. So I'm gonna bend up your knees, okay? I'm going to bring your legs towards me. If you feel any pain, you need to let me know. Any pain? No. The next stretch is the hamstring stretch. This stretch helps reduce back pain and also helps with walking and transfers. The client is lying on their back and their arms are in their comfortable position. Caregivers, you place one hand under the client's knee and your other hand is cupping the heel of the same leg. Remember to move the joint in a slow motion. Stretching should never hurt. If it does, you've gone too far. Let's review the hamstring procedure. Number one, adjusted the height of the bed if necessary or possible. Number two, client was lying on his back and the arms were in a comfortable position. Three, the caregiver hand positions. Placed one hand under the client's knee and the other hand cupped the heel of the same leg. Number four, caregiver kept his back as straight as possible. Number five, Caregiver placed his knee on the bed if needed to keep his back straight. Number six, informed the client of what they were going to do prior to moving them. Number seven, client's motion was completed through a pain-free range. Number eight, moved the limb in a straight line from starting to end position. Number nine, moved the limb slowly and avoided rapid or abrupt motions. Number ten, held the stretch for the designated time in the care plan. And last, number 11, documented the care. Okay, now we're gonna stretch out your hamstring. If it hurts, let me know. Okay, I'm gonna straighten your knee. Any pain? No. The next passive range of motion stretch is hip flexion. Once again, the client is lying on their back and their arms are in a comfortable position. Caregivers, you place one hand on their client's knee and the other hand is cupping the heel of the same leg. Remember to move the limb slowly until you come to a point where you feel resistance. You stop there and you hold that position. The hip flexion stretch helps with back pain and also assists with walking and transfers. Let's review the hip flexion procedure before we watch the video. Number one, you've adjusted the height of the bed if necessary or possible. 
Number two, client was lying on his back and his arms were in a comfortable position. Number three, the caregiver hand positions. Placed one hand under the client's knee and the other hand cupped the heel of the same leg. Number four, the caregiver kept his back as straight as possible. Number five, caregiver placed his knee on the bed if needed to keep his back straight. Number six, inform the client of what they were going to do prior to moving them. Number seven, the client's motion was completed through a pain-free range. Number eight, move the limb in a straight line from starting to end position. Number nine, move the limb slowly and avoided rapid or abrupt motions. Number ten, held the stretch for the designated time in the care plan. And number eleven, documented the care. So now we're going to check, stretch out your hips a little bit. So I'm going to bring your right knee up towards your chest. Let me know if it hurts at all. I'm just going to back off a little bit. Any pain there? No. The final stretch we're going to be demonstrating is the ankle stretch. This stretch helps with walking and transfers. The client is lying on their back and their arms are in a comfortable position. Caregivers, it's very important that you note your own body position in this stretch. Caregiver, you're going to cup the client's heel and rest your forearm against the ball of their foot. Your opposite hand steadies the ankle by placing your hand on the leg just above the ankle. Remember to use your own body weight to perform the stretch. Before we watch the ankle stretch video, let's review the procedure. Number one, you've adjusted the height of the bed if necessary or possible. Number two, client was lying on his back and his arms were in a comfortable position. Number three, the caregiver hand positions. Cupping the heel of the client, forearm rested against the ball of the client's foot. The other hand steadied the ankle by placing the hand on the leg just above the ankle. Number four, caregiver kept his back as straight as possible. Number five, caregiver placed his knee on the bed if needed to keep his back straight. Number six, informed the client of what they were going to do prior to moving them. Number seven, the client's motion was completed through a pain-free range. Number eight, Move the limb in a straight line from starting to end position. Number nine, move the limb slowly and avoided rapid or abrupt motions. Number ten, held the stretch for the designated time in the care plan. And number eleven, documented the care. So, Jenny, we're going to do your ankle range. Let me know if it hurts. Any pain? No. If the client has a lot of spasticity or tightness or tone, it's important that you avoid the bottom of their foot. Grasping the bottom of their foot can actually increase the amount of tone and make range of motion more difficult. You will have to adjust your hand placements as necessary. If you're struggling, please let the nurse know and they can assist you with problem solving. If during the initial stretch, you get a rapid movement or a tapping motion in the ankle or joint, it is okay to stop the range of motion. The solution is to slightly bend the joint above the one you're working on. What this does is it relieves the pressure on that joint and the clonus or tapping actually stops. If the clonus or tapping continues, please notify the nurse. Range of motion is typically completed daily by caregivers. 
Because of how frequently range of motion is done, it's important that you notify the nurse if you notice any changes with the range of motion. Specific things that you should be watching for is increased tightness. If you notice any new resistance with a certain movement, meaning that you can't progress the stretch as far as you had the day before or the previous week. And if the client is complaining of any new pain with the movement. I strongly recommend you check the care plan to see what the previous range of motion progressions were and notify the nurse if you see any changes. So in conclusion, caregivers, it's very important that you're aware of your own body mechanics during range of motion. Your safety and the health of your back is just as important as your clients. When performing range of motion, stretching should never hurt. It should feel like a gentle pull. If it does hurt, you need to back off on the stretch and hold that position for the set time. Always move the client's limb in a slow, deliberate motion from point A to point B. We'd like to thank you for your time. Please ask your RN if you have any questions. When you are ready, please complete the knowledge and demonstrated skill assessment.